In this video I wanted to take that image I was already working on and I was going to show a few different methods for sharpening. Sharpening is a really useful thing. Uh, it's easily overdone. Like most things in Photoshop it's best done with subtlety. But it can also be a really useful way to bring an image together. Uh, it can be a good way to get a gritty look out of it if that's what you're shooting for. A lot of times in photo composites I use it to make elements feel similar to one another because a lot of times that level of sharpness from different photos you bring together are a little bit different and putting a filter in over the top uh, can really help with that. Um, one thing I'm going to do in order to make this work, because several of my methods will show this, I'm going to go ahead and flatten out uh, these layers, just merge those two layers. So I just have a single photo and the first one that I'm going to show is actually from the filters themselves. If you go up to filter at the top menu and you do sharpen, uh, I'm going to use smart sharpen because that one tends to have a decent result to it. And I'm going to keep the preview icon on and just increase the amount, increasing the radius, and even reduce the noise a little bit. Let's see if that's... I have to push in some to really be able to see. Now if you look at my window here, you're going to be able to see the difference it's going to make in the hair. If I hit OK, it's going to process that. It may actually take it a minute here, so I'll give it a minute. But what I will say about this filter I'm putting on is it is destructive. I'm doing it to the actual layer itself rather than something that I can change after. Because of that, this is not usually the best option to do it, but I think it's a good to mention that Photoshop has custom or it has automated processes for which you can sharpen your images. Uh, what I prefer to do is something a bit more manual that I can reverse if I need to. And also it tends to give you a little bit cleaner results. Uh, as anything in Photoshop, there's a hundred different ways to do the exact same thing. So it's really all about what the effect you like and if you're familiar with a lot of them they each give kind of a, a slightly different look and you can just make that a tool that you have in figuring out which one you want to use for a particular situation. So you can see how the sharpening came out here it's pretty strong I, I bumped up the the levels quite a bit but honestly I just never really like the results that I get from using that particular form of sharpening so I'm gonna back that up hit command Z and I'm going to show you one that works a little bit better. I'm going to take my photo layer, I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate it, and then I'm going to go up to Filter, Other, and High Pass. I show this in class all the time because you get a really interesting look from it. Uh, this brings up a little dialog box. Let's see if I can find my figure in here. There we go. And essentially this creates a monochromatic thing that focuses on the details looking just for the really dark lines essentially and I can adjust the radius of that to make it more or less intense for this I'm actually going to go for about a radius of two pixels and I'm going to hit OK and then set that layer to overlay now if I push in close and then toggle that off and on you can see a very slight sharpening effect again subtlety is really key with these types of things and the high pass filter is a great way to do a subtle one if you expand that radius too far it tends to to mess up a little bit but if you keep it subtle you can sharpen something up and it's almost unnoticeable in itself but overall it gives a change to the feeling of the photo I'm gonna try another one here and duplicate a couple of these create a folder, put them both in it. Uh, this one on top, I'm going to hit Command I and invert and then I'm going to set the blending mode of that one to vivid light. Now I'm going to be moving fairly quickly through this so uh, don't worry about it if it seems a little bit difficult to keep up. I'm going to go to the folder itself and set that to overlay. And then I'm going to take this photo that I inverted earlier, and I'm going to do Filter Blur, which seems kind of strange, but I picked this up from a photo website, and this is my favorite sharpening technique, and I'm going to use a surface blur. Now 
Now after I did that, it usually takes a second to apply. I get a really interesting sharpening effect from it. And what I really love about this particular effect, for one thing I can toggle it on and off so you can really see the difference. It does a great job bringing out subtle detail and then I can also manipulate it just by lowering the opacity of that folder. So it's basically a sharpening folder. So not only do I have control over whether or not I keep the sharpen because it's not destructive, but I can also affect the level to which it sharpens even further into the editing process. So this is my favorite one to do. Uh, I picked it up from a photographer somewhere. I wish I could remember so I could credit, but these techniques are floating around all over the place. And it's all about the result that you want to get and you can kind of find your own path to accomplish things in Photoshop.